They say that the new Corvette Stingray is the best Corvette ever. That you might choose one over a 911 for reasons other than the lower price. That it's a true driver's car that should work on any sort of road. Of course, we've heard that before, and somehow the US icon has never quite translated here in Europe. Well, this is any sort of road. It's wet, wild, bumpy, and very, very Welsh. It's where we come when we want to get to know a car properly, and it's a billion miles away from California. If the 455 horsepower 6.2 litre V8 Stingray can cut it here, then maybe this is a Corvette we should finally take seriously. European Stingrays get the Z51 package as standard. That's bigger wheels, stiffer tuning for the magnetic dampers, an e-diff, dry sump lubrication, shorter gear ratios, and bigger brakes too. So let's see what all that goodness really feels like. So this is the first Corvette Stingray in the country. It's been borrowed from the European press team. We've been told not to figure it, not to track test it, group test it, basically to treat it like a baby. It's also on winter tires, so that might slightly muddy the dynamic picture. But even so, today is all about just getting to know this Corvette Stingray on filthy roads, in filthy conditions. It's about 11 a.m., it's already dark. This is the British winter time. But we're gonna find out a little bit about this car with a full test to follow. Even in isolation and on these filthy roads, the Stingray does feel like a big, big leap on from the C6. The C6 wasn't a big car, but it felt huge in the UK for some reason. This car, it's a nice driving environment, lovely steering wheel, and the sharply defined wings, they just seem to shrink the car down, and you actually feel able to exploit it. Better still, the engine is absolutely brilliant. It's so much sharper than before, it just revs and it's properly angry. Sometimes these small block Chevy engines got big numbers, but they don't quite translate to the road, but this one is proper. It's 911 plus performance for sort of came and money, so it makes quite a lot of sense. This car's got a seven speed manual gearbox, which I'm absolutely loathe to criticize because any manual gearbox in 2014 is something to celebrate but it doesn't have a lockout like the 911 box does from 4th up to 7th. And I keep doing that shift, it's really, really annoying. But otherwise, it's a nice, tight, quick gear change. Pretty heavy, as you'd expect, but that sort of suits the car. I'm just pleased to be in a car with a manual box. It's all about the chassis, the thing that's normally been unraveled by these nasty, bumpy UK roads. Well, this car's configurable with these magnetic dampers. You've got eco mode, touring, sport, and track. The first two you can forget about, you get really light steering. Corvette doesn't really feel like a sports car, so I don't know why you'd want those. But in sport and track, <laughs> it's still really quite a supple thing, but the body control ramps up. There's a nice precision to it. The steering's really good. That means you can lean on the car. And the chassis itself is very, very supple, much more so than, say, an F-Type Jag. And so you can drive the car quick, even on the bumpy roads. The payback for that suppleness, which initially feels really good, is, as you heard earlier, the body control is not as good as something like an F-Type, certainly not up there with a 991. On these roads, the car bottoms out quite a lot. And just the precision is eroded. It's like sometimes the chassis and the body are slightly out of sync with each other. And it just takes away a little bit of the confidence, all that confidence you've got through the steering and the balance, which is really, really good. So it's a shame, but body control not quite there at the moment. So maybe there's just a few chinks in the armor of that body control, but the balance itself is really, really good. It's quite a calm car, it hasn't got that instant bite that something like the F-Type has. But what that means is that it's a calm car to drive quickly too and you can feel exactly what both axles are doing. But drive up to the limits with real confidence. And I, I like that about it, it doesn't feel jumpy at all. It's just got a smooth confidence about it. And it's got loads and loads of grip. Okay, we're on winter tires and it is cold so they're probably working pretty well. 
But point to point, this thing is really quick. You'd expect it to sort of fall over on these roads and slide everywhere. But no, this thing properly goes. What other weaknesses? Well, the brakes are a bit strange, really. They're very, very powerful. The ABS actuation's really nicely judged, but the pedal is so inconsistent. Sometimes it's rock hard, other times it's really long and soft, and then the next time it'll be somewhere in between. It's a real shame that every time you get on them, you don't really know what to expect. So that's our first taste of the Stingray here in the UK on these brilliant, but really, really testing roads. I'll tell you what, it's not bad at all. It's got really good steering, mega engine, precise and adjustable chassis, proper gearbox, and a noise that is genuine, not synthesized. <laughs> okay, so it lacks that last bit of precision that some of its European rivals have. The interior is still nothing on an F-Type or a 911, if that's your thing. But even here, a million miles from its comfort zone, you can actually make a pretty good case for this Corvette. I really quite like it. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the Evo channel.